the new Land Rover Defender. Yes, I've been waiting far too long for a flowery introduction on this one, so let's get to it. Land Rover's completely redesigned Defender comes on the heels of virtually 70 years of untouched design. Now that I've gotten in it, I think they absolutely nailed it. Now, like the Defender of yore, the new Defender comes in two sizes, a short wheelbase 90 and the 110. The 90's not coming out until next spring, so I'm going to be in the 110, and I'm gonna start this review with my favorite part of this car, the interior. Land Rover got absolutely everything right in here. There's a ton of space, especially headroom, thanks to its boxy shape. It maintains the right amount of rugged appeal with touches like exposed hardware and structural elements and a minimal appearance, but still manages to check off the luxury box. The materials that they use in here are unique and feel special. Seats are a combination of durable woven fabrics and leathers that feel like they could withstand a lot. Luxtech, that's a synthetic hybrid leather, covers handles on the door and places you'll do the most grabbing. And the spots where you'd normally find plastic, you get a durable feeling rubberized material. Design is minimal in here, so there's plenty of room for storing stuff. You've got here, you've got here, here and here, there's a spot down here, and there are a lot of different ways that you can customize your center console. You can get a drink fridge in the center console or have a jump seat put in the console's place to seat six. There is an optional third row, which is also jump seats, but those might just be for kids only. The 10 inch monitor looks great. The graphics are lovely and clear. While it is greatly improved, I still find Land Rover's interface to be complicated. Yes, the sophisticated software can download updates while you still listen to music, which is pretty cool. But the back button only appears under certain circumstances, and I'm not even convinced that this is like a back button. So, uh, see what I mean? It's there and it's gone, so you know what? I'm just going to plug this in and use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which comes standard on all trims. Two powertrains are available in the U.S., a 2-liter turbocharged inline 4 and the one I'm driving, a mild hybrid 3-liter inline 6 that makes 395 horses and a substantial 406 pound-feet of torque. Land Rover does make a diesel option, but not for the U.S. I do feel a little bit of lag with that supercharger, but oh. Overall, the power feels plentiful and substantial. And quite necessary if you're driving on something like loose gravel or sand. Both of those engines mate to a smooth shifting eight-speed automatic transmission, and all Defenders have permanent all-wheel drive. But the ride on the road feels absolutely superb. The air suspension, which comes standard on the 90, both on the first edition and the X variant, and then across all trims on the 110, absorbs absolutely everything, but without feeling floaty. Now there is a coil suspension setup. It's not available in the US yet, but next spring it will be on the base 90. The steering isn't truck wonky, but feels accurate and precise, even if there's no connection between you and the road. You cannot say that of the previous Defender. One nitpick, the brakes feel a bit grabby initially. You'd think you would get used to them, but honestly, when I'm off-roading, I like a little less bite up at the top of the pedal. This is a bueno road trip car for sure. Now I don't have kids to corroborate that, but my buddy, Jeff Glucker from Auto Trader, he does, and he's gonna talk about that a little bit on his review over on their channel. Yeah, we had to share this because, you know, Land Rover didn't give me my own. I don't have kids, I don't share well. Share. Oof. That's a COVID high five. On-road info box checked. Let's get to the good stuff. I have competed in some off-road rallies and I do know a little bit about driving in the dirt and that's where the Defender really shines. The terrain response system gives the driver a lot of information to work with in different conditions. And you can see how each mode configures the Defender's tools. The Defender's middle and rear differentials can lock fully or utilize a limited slip system depending on the conditions that you're in. The air suspension will lift the ride height of the car at all four corners or independently depending on the clearance that you need. The Defender rides on the new D7X architecture that's light and flexible but incredibly durable. 
No, it does not get solid axles, but the independent suspension does a great job articulating over obstacles. What's truly impressive are the off-roading dimensions on the new Defender when it's in that off-road height. An 11.5 inch ground clearance, a 34.5 inch wade depth, and a 45 degree ascent and descent gradient are all pretty mind blowing. Those numbers stack up nicely with the off-road juggernaut Jeep Wranglers and Ford Broncos of the world, even exceeding them in some cases. The surround camera views and clarity are excellent. And while you can use those cameras when off-roading, I always prefer to get out and actually look at what I'm driving over or have someone else spot if there's a question. So don't be fooled by the luxurious appearance. There are plenty of chops under here. Speaking of that appearance, the exterior gets it right as well, maybe with one exception. So the front end is really where you're gonna see the biggest departure from the previous design. It loses its boxiness. Some people, uh, they can't stop complaining about it. Others love it. Uh, so it's up to you. But there are some awesome heritage details on the car. The multiple squircle tail lights, alpine windows, and the side hinged rear door, just to name a few. I wish there was a step in the rear bumper to access the roof, and the diamond plate on the hood is decorative only. Do not step on this. And of course, this is a modern vehicle, so it gets all kinds of driver's assistance features if you want them, including blind spot alerts, dynamic cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Pricing on the Defender 110 starts at around $51,300, including fees. The 90 will set you back closer to around $47,500. I said it up front and I'll say it again. I think Land Rover absolutely nailed it with the new Defender. And you know what? They took so long to let me drive it that I'm not gonna give it back. <laughs>